Hello YouTube, my name is Jason and this is Lion Where Today we are going to go over some more object related uh, methods that you can override. And in our last one we did the clone method that we overrode. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to do the equals method. And the equals method is written like this. So it's a public boolean and it's just equal and that's how you would do the equals method and then you would just have to give it a return type and we could just say true but that's how you would do it you would basically put whatever you want in here and it would have to return a true or false statement but there is a default for this and the way you would basically use the default since I had deleted that you would basically come up here and let's go ahead and create a type object 3 and let's make this equal to object 1 I know what you're thinking because we did the clone method last time why would I clone anything because I can just do this and clone the whole thing well that's exactly why this does not give you a choice to clone certain things this only gives you the option to clone all of it say I wanted to clone just skin and maybe mouth and there was like 15 other private uh, fields well you can't do that with that you can't just copy mouth and skin you'd have to copy all of them and that's why we use that clone method because we can manipulate that clone method to copy exactly what we want to copy whenever we create it so that's why we use the clone method instead the equals method now let's get back into that um you can basically do it like this system dot out dot print line and then you would basically say something like object one dot equals and if you notice it comes right up and it's asking you for an object type and an object if you remember is just a part of the lang package and it is inside of anything so let's go ahead any object so now we have this object 3 and what it's going to do is going to check to see if object 1 is equal to object 3 what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this we're going to bring it down one space and we're going to change this to object 2 that way we're copying both just to check and see if this one's equal and if this one's equal and whenever we print this you can see that it, object 1 is is equal to object 3 whereas object 1 is not equal to object 2 even though we use that clone it's not completely equal to it because all that did was copy certain files whereas this copied all of it because we did it like this and that's how that works the next one I want to tell you about is the finalize you can override the finalize you don't never have to call it because the finalize uh, method is actually used anytime before the garbage collection anytime garbage collection happens it does the finalize method and the reason it does this is it it does this to uh, determine certain factors that you want to have happen and you can override this method and the way you would do this is you would basically do a protected you want it to be protected and you want it to be void and you want it to be finalized and then you would basically just put whatever uh, actions you want inside of the finalized method and whenever garbage collection happens this method will be invoked before garbage collection is initiated so that's how that works the last thing I'm going to go over in this tutorial is the two string method which is ideal to override and I'll show you right now why let's go ahead and let's copy this and we're going to do a object dot to string and it's going to print out the what object one looks like whenever it's turned into a string so let's go ahead and refresh uh, save that and this is what it gets this is what object one looks like whenever it's a string to the to string method 
The reason you want to override the two string method is because you can you read that? Do you know what that even means? No, I don't. Now let's go ahead and let's override this two string method. And the way you got to override it is you got to do a public string two string of course because we're overriding it right and this is basically uh, I think I did that right oh uh, yeah I gotta put a return value of course um, the way you would want to return this is let's say we want to return skin and let's say return and well, the easiest method of doing this would be doing a creating a new string, and we could call this like um, the string, anything. And what we would do is we would just add in this the string. We would just add what we wanted to add in it, and we could basically go skin plus mouth and you can just add whatever else you wanted to add in here. Um, let's say this is the mouth. Or we could just take that part right there out and just call it mouth. And then we could just come over here and do the same. And we want to add a plus sign right here and just say skin. And this is really what's defining our uh, methods right here. And of course right here because we got to put a little space right there so those aren't connecting. And then what we want to do is we just want to return that string. So return the string. So now if we pass this by, now we get skin, scaly, mouth, beak. Now we're actually returning a value to the two string method, which we overrode. And you, if you remember, before we had that method, it just had some weird writing that was un un we couldn't understand. And that would be the reason why you would want to override that two string. Well, that's all I'm going over in this tutorial. Thank you for watching. My name is Jason. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and have a great day. Round two, here we go again.